Hello internet, and welcome to my live reaction for the Cuckoo's Fiance chapter 74. Uh, when we last left our heroes, um, in the aftermath of the darts game, and everyone kind of reacting to Erika's uh, perfect bullseye, uh, I kind of dragged Nagi out and basically sets up this whole metaphor that you know, Nagi is sort of bogged down by all of the girls around him, and but they're also in the bog with him, and all four of them can't really get out because they're mired in destiny or something. It's sort of weird. But the main point is that I sees herself as above it all. And it's this very kind of savory aspect where I, like, literally, like, we see Nagi and the and then Sachi, Erika, and, and Hiro all, like, covered in, in mud and I is so pristine. She's like holding her skirt above above the mud. It, she has this very clear like I am above everyone vibe uh, that metaphor kind of kind of gives me. Anyway, she kind of confesses her undying love for Nagi in no uncertain terms, uh, and just sort of walks off. No matter what you have to say about I, she does what she wants to do, and then she fucking gets out of there, <laughs> uh, leaving Nagi kind of collapsed on the on the sidewalk stunned that a girl has confessed to him for the first time uh yeah that's sort of where we left off so with that let's jump right on into the 74th foul i felt like i was on cloud nine and our picture here is of hero uh eating a popsicle on her porch just kind of kind of relaxing we see like a fan by her side it's like a hot summer day uh nagi received a confession from i who was his first love his heart pounds with anxiety and we open sometime sometime after um, last chapter's ending with Nagi sort of relaxing back at home on one of the, the pool chairs. I guess these things do happen. And he flashes back to, to Ai's confession. I love you so much, Nagi-chan. And Nagi kind of closes his eyes and then he flashes back to that final moment with her like little cat mouth. I love you so much. And Nagi sort of like jolts awake, his heart beating. I can't believe it. For the first time in my life, it happened. I feel hot. I do think, though, I think it's fairly obvious here that this isn't really attraction Nagi is feeling. It's more just sort of, sort of, of, you know, he he's a, he's a hormonal heterosexual teenage boy. He wants girls to be attracted to him. And seeing a girl confess to him for the first time has sort of got him in a certain way. Uh, more so than, it's, it's less, my point being that it's less I that's making him feel this way, and more the fact that I is a girl who is into him. Um, anyway, I feel hot. And he apparently said that out loud, because <laughs> Erika and Sachi uh, are, like, looming over him now, and Erika comments, that's heat stroke, isn't it? And Nagi's sort of stunned by the two of them. Uh, and Erika continues, seriously, Nagi-kun, if you don't eat anything, you're you're really gonna be exhausted. Uh, Zachi chimes in. You haven't eaten anything since last night, have you? And Nagi sits up. I guess so. Uh, and then they take him somewhere else. I think. Feast your eyes. Zachi Chan and I cooked up some somen. Um, you see, there's like a, a basket full of noodles. I don't know enough about Japanese food to quite give the details on what somen is in particular. But either way. Um, uh, both both Erika and and Sachi kind of clap their hands. It kept on bubbling over whenever I stopped stirring it. It was a lot. It was a lot of work, you know, and it was hot. And Sachi sort of looks at her exhausted. The fact that you've never done anything like this before really shows that you're a rich girl, which you know is kind of kind of her thing. Um. And Nagi picks it up, and we see the noodles are like bound in something. Hmm. Say, did Soman always look like this? Uh, and Sachi, I think, then snaps at Erika. You cooked it without removing the paper ties? Hmm? Uh, but Erika just kind of, I guess, takes the paper ties off and kind of chows down. And then comments to Nagi, it really makes you laugh, though. Seriously, Nagi-kun. Hiding in bed all day just because you got confessed to? Uh, and Sachi kind of joins in on the, on the making fun of Nagi train. For real. Nowadays, even grade schoolers wouldn't do that. And Nagi kind of, kind of, kind of snaps back at them while trying to chew on his noodles and commenting that they're hard. <laughs> Which, while I don't know anything about Japanese cooking, I do know that noodles aren't supposed to be hard. Um. Anyway, oh shut up! This doesn't have anything to do with you two. 
And besides, it was my first time hearing anything like that. And that sort of stuns Erika and Sachi. And Erika goes back on that on that train of thought she's been having for weeks now. But you're a lady killer! And Sachi just sort of mocks, now that's just kind of sad. And Nagi gets kind of mad at them. What is wrong with these two? And Sachi just sort of sighs. Confessions, huh? Once you get used to it, you kind of just try to avoid them as soon as you think it might happen. Which is it's a, a bit of a note there is that like Sachi has at least some experience with being confessed to, as we saw back in, in chapter 70. Uh, and so now she kind of has an almost like older sister vibe. Erika's also kind of adding on, but that feels less like she's had guys confess to her and more like she just kind of wants to mock Nagi. But also she is an influencer. She might have had some guys confess to her and not just like randos on the street. Either way, Erika chimes in. I know, right? When you, have to wor when you have to worry about how to turn them down, you actually end up quite calm instead. Exactly. And Nagi sort of sits there listening to all this and then slams his fist down. No! There's no way Aichan's confession is any bit like your silly little games you call confessions. We're talking about feelings she's held on to for seven whole years. He's getting really passionate here. I could see I could see this being read as him actually having some kind of reciprocal feelings for I. Uh, I'm obviously not on board with that for many reasons. Uh, one being my my longtime Nagi area shipping, and the other being I is just sort of viewing Nagi as a possession that I've talked about at length in some previous videos. Uh, but that's definitely a reading you could could take to this. Either way, Nagi looks at them. You two would never understand. And Sachi, and Sachi and Erika kind of freeze, a little shocked by the ferocity of his outburst. And then the two of them sort of uh, turn away to sort of um, converse. He's hopeless. We made it considerably, considerably worse. But then the two of them both blush, pairing them together as romantic rivals, yada, yada, yada. Fuck Nagi, Sachi. You, you've heard the spiel by now. Uh, Erika thinks, but... Nagi was confessed to, and Sachi, Aichan confessed, also blushing. I've been trying to, like, not go into my anti-Sachi tangent, but it's really, really hard to, because any time there's even the slightest potential for it, I am more than happy to dig in. Um, but after 74 chapters of me reviewing this series, <laughs> you should kind of get the memo by now. Um, anyway, they finished the food. Ah, let's go cook some more somen. I'll make some more sauce, too. So that, that I think, is Erika. And we, could, we don't quite see who's talking, but I think that's Erika and Saji very much kind of deflecting from, from the sort of discomfort of, of I confessing to Nagi. Uh, anyway, we then come back to Nagi's thoughts. I never thought that simply being confessed to can make somebody feel like this. And he flashes back to his own confession to Hiro, way back in, like, chapter 5 or something. I like you, Seikawa-san. Will you go out with me? And then he kind of ponders on it more. I wonder, did Seikawa-san feel this way too? And then he flashes back to, I believe, that uh, Hiro at the festival, uh, when they kind of came clean about the engagement. No more secrets, okay? And Nagi keeps thinking, wait a second... And he flashes back to how Hero will react to this. You got a confession from a... Or not flashes back. Kind of imagines how Hero will react to this. You got a confession from a girl? Explain yourself. And we see uh, uh, Erika and Sachi in the background. We reported everything to Hero-chan. Don't get too cocky, Nagi. They both got like literal devil horns. It's a, it's a funny little bit. And Nagi kind of freezes for a second. And then he, he like slams his, his like hands on the table... And he gets this, like, devilish grin. I want to see her like that. And then he kind of stops himself. No, it's better to play it safe. Uh, and then we cut to the Segua Shrine, where we see people sort of working um, at some... They're constructing something, I think. Because uh, we see Hiro in her, like, Shrine Maiden's robes and in a hard hat. There's a, kind of a, bit, of a, a bit of a funny... Uh, <laughs> funny dichotomy there. Funny contrast, I mean. Anyway, she calls... She calls up some construction workers. Well then, keep up the good work. You got it. And she sets some things down. There we go. And she looks up. Huh? And we see... <laughs> what is that vibe, Nagi? He's got this, like... This, like... You know, button-down shirt. 
uh, the like black pants. He's like he's got these like sparkles. He's like shoujo sparkles around him. Like he's trying to be the coolest guy in the world. But, like body posture, the hands. It's fucking <laughs> almost a parody. Umino kun, sup. <laughs> he's just so out of character. Uh, and Hiro walks over to him. What are you doing here? Did you need something? Hmm. Well, you know, I wanted to talk about something. Uh, and then Hiro just sort of is taken aback for a sec and then comes back to reality. You're in the way over there. So could you scram? Ah, uh, yes. Sorry about that. And he kind of gets out of the way. All, all pretensions of coolness quickly lost. Um, and then some time passes and Hiro is sort of explaining some things to Nagi. Our shrine is a festival coming up tomorrow, you see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's a neighborhood association to consider, too. It's like it's like this around this time every year, since Tokyo's a bit behind. I don't know enough about shrines or Tokyo or Japanese culture to really understand what that since Tokyo's a bit behind concept is about. I know the story should be... Like, given, given the last definitive date we got was, like, July, I think, for the, the Mario game uh, back in the Villa arc... And so it's probably been a month or so since then. It might be around August. And August, I know, is Oban, which is a big Japanese festival. So maybe it's about Oban? I'm not quite sure. Um, the details. I'm not going to pretend to know the details. There are so many details I don't know. Wait, basically, I'm talking at my ass right now. But enough about that. Back to the important things. Uh, Nagi sort of gives this little laugh. Haha, <laughs> you sound awfully busy. Uh, and Hiro sort of looks at him, kind of frustrated, and then goes on... Just look at all these drinks. We need to keep all of them cold with a ton of ice. And Nagi, it's kind of hard to tell if he's even listening, honestly. Ah, I see, I see. Because I, I get the sense that Nagi is so kind of caught up in what he wants to say, he's just straight up not listening to Hiro at all. Uh, and this year I had to be in charge of it all. But we're really short-handed. We've been busy since morning. Or maybe she's like very not so subtly trying to like get Nagi to help out. That's certainly something. And we see Hiro's just, like, done with this. So what was it you wanted to talk about? <laughs> and Nagi, fooling no one, I think. Ah, I totally forgot about that. Well, it's nothing important, really. <laughs> just uh, just get to the point, Nagi. Stop all this beating around the bush. Uh, anyway, Hiro calls, calls out to someone. Ah, could you, take a, could you take that under the tower, please? Thanks. And bring the association board dinner over, too. And Nagi gets back to his smug little grin. Uh, and then finally comes... And then Hiro sort of comes back to, to Nagi. Yeah, sorry. And she kind of like wipes her sweat with, her, with a rag. What's up? Well, it's not a big deal, really. And then we see at some point... He, um, Hiro is now like chopping watermelons. So basically, for the first time in my, for the first time in my life, someone confessed to me. She's my childhood friend from a while back, and I felt like I was on cloud nine. Basically, it was thrilling. And we see Hero starts to sh we see like Hero start to tremble, uh, and Nagi looks at her, a little bit scared but a little bit excited to see the face in his his fantasy. And then she just sort of lets out, "I see." Uh, but there's still some kind of some kind of kanji sound effect around her. I can't I don't quite know what's going on there in particular. She might still be trembling a little bit. Uh, and Nagi's sort of uh, ready to see that that blushing face. Take that, Segua-san. I bet you're really flustered now, aren't you? You're really worried, aren't you? About me. Hmm. Uh, someone comes in. Uh, hey, Hiro-chan. The carpenters have already gone on break, you know. Hurry it up a bit. And we see a shot of her continuing to chop the watermelon, I guess, for the carpenters. Uh, and then we see um, Hiro kind of wipe her face. Yeah. Uh, she looks a little bit unsettled, uh, which is, you know, kind of uh, screwing some things up with the with the, the construction work if the food's not ready. Uh, and Nagi is sort of apologetic for that. I, I went too far. And then he kind of Tries, tries to backpedal. Ah, ah, but I know I said it was thrilling, but my feelings for you still haven't changed. So what I mean is, you can rest assured. And she gets back to chopping. Um, 
And she takes a bite out of of the watermelon. Phew, it's hot. You know what? This knife's pretty sharp. And she... Oh, that's a good fucking shot. That's that's a good fucking money shot right there. It's like it was made for killing. And we see the watermelon juice running down uh, Hero's chin and dripping off the knife blade. <laughs> Looks like something out of fucking Higurashi right there. Uh, scaring the shit out of Nagi. That's just a good... That's... I complained a while back about a sort of... of um homogeny of Yoshikawa's money shots, how they tend to be, you know, a female character in the exact same pose, every single chapter kind of leaning back, like, borderline shaft tilting. Um, but this one, this one is fucking good. <laughs> I'm all here for this. And Nagi just kind of panics, uh, and then she turns back, just kidding, and then she sort of wipes, her, wipes the, the juice off her chin again. Uh, right, I was just about to ask you, and was he a flyer for the festival? And she hands it to him. Huh? And now he looks at it. Huh? For the festival tomorrow. You must bring her along as well. A chill goes down Nagi's spine. Is it an act? A joke? Next time the summer festival begins. So I'm assuming the her there is is I. Um, which I think that ties into a larger question about Hero. Because for a while, for about 30 chapters now, I've been wondering why... Why Hero seems so, so invested in Nagi Sachi? Why she's continually kind of, in a kind of roundabout way, pushing Nagi Sachi? If she's into Nagi, which kind of seems to be the case, why would she support Sachi of all people? Like even if she does, even if she weren't into into Nagi, kind of push him towards Erika. Because, you know, that's the one that's not incestuous. Um, but she's pu- she's been pushing towards Sachi. For, or pushing Sachi towards him, more like, most of the time. But then we also... But pairing, pairing that with this bit here, you must bring her along as well, is her, res- her response to this girl confessed to me is go on a date with her. There's something more there. I don't know what it is. I don't have anywhere near enough information to know what exactly is going on with Hero. And my complete in you know, my complete failure in reading how far um Erika was in her romantic development during 69 sort of uh causes me to hesitate inferring anything in this series. Um I do think there's something there. I think there's something with Hero that we don't know that for some reason is pushing, is focused on pushing Nagi with anyone besides herself. I don't know why. I don't know. I have no idea what could be the reason there, but there's definitely something going on with her. And maybe this festival could possibly provide an answer. Maybe, I don't know. It might be, it might be Russian things. This is a harem manga after all. They're not exactly known for their fast pace. But it's a possibility. Maybe. Maybe we'll get some hints and not straight up answers. Anyway, this chapter was some good fun. There's a lot of fun here. Uh, both in Nagi's just sort of kind of being, you know, basically catatonic after being con- confessed to some a good, a good Erika's rich and doesn't know how to do anything joke. Um, Nagi's just sheer energy. At defending Ai's confession. It's a really interesting thing. I'm curious how people are kind of taking that. Are we supposed to read that as he does have some feelings for Ai? Is it a genuine, you know, regardless of how I feel towards Ai, the fact that she held on to those feelings for so long is meaningful, even if they're not reciprocated? Or is it, you know, I have feelings for Ai as well? Or is it a girl confessed to me and that's way more like my my experiences are more important than yours because I'm a teenager and I'm kind of selfish. Um, I don't know. I think I think either of those readings are sort of valid uh, in the in a way this manga kind of always allows different differing interpretations of characters' actions. Um, but yeah, then we come to to hero, 
And honestly, I kind of do love the hero bit. There's multiple great gags in the hero section from just Nagi trying to be cool and then just sort of falling apart super fast, both with, with Hiro telling him to scram and then him like trying to sort of sound cool and aloof and Hiro just getting more and more tired of it. <laughs> um, and he's like total, total fake, um... Uh, oh, I forgot what I came here for. Like, that's that's not fooling anyone. And then, of course, the best gag of the chapter is that money shot is the knife full of watermelon juice. <laughs> and the hero kind of threatens him. That's just a good fucking bit. Um, though, also, that tying, tying into my, you know, what are Sachi's, or not Sachi, what are Hero's ulterior motives? That is very clearly Hero having feelings for, or the, the, the bit is Hero playing the yandere is what she's kind of kind of doing is that, you know, the gag is that she doesn't want anyone else to be into Nagi uh, and if Nagi keeps flaunting the other people are, she'll kill him is sort of the, the gag between the, you know, what's, what's hidden under, under the joke or the, the implication of the joke. It's not a joke. Or it, it is a joke, uh, and it's not serious. She has, she's not actually even hinting towards being some kind of yandere, but she is still sort of implying in there what's underneath the joke is that she does have feelings for Nagi, but she hasn't really made clear to Nagi yet, but that's sort of the only way to sort of understand that joke, is that she's saying, I have feelings for you, and I'm not going to let her have feelings for you. Um... At least that's the only way I can interpret it. Maybe someone else can, can find a different meaning in that. I don't know. All in all, it's a funny chapter. Uh, there's some, some really good gags there. And then there's just still all of the stuff around Hero. There's something to Hero that we just don't know. And hopefully next chapter will give us some kind of, of clue to sort of work this character out. Because as far as everyone in the series except Soichiro... She's the most mysterious, I think. Maybe I, because she's so new. And also, going back to Soichiro, though, she's kind of been paired with Soichiro in, like, a metatextual sense before. When she first has that, what if... Wouldn't everything be resolved if Nagi and Sachi just got together? That's distinctly paired with Soichiro, interestingly enough. I don't know if there's any connection there. Just an interesting observation. Hiro's a weird character, and I want to know more about her. Um... But yeah, maybe, maybe we'll get that next time, maybe we won't. Either way, that's all I have to say for this video. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!